and welcome to our channel med study today in this video we are going to see about clinical examination in pediatrics so i have divided clinical examination in pediatrics in four parts first is general examination second is anthropometry third is head to toe examination and fourth is developmental examination coming to general examination start with assessing whether the child is alert and playful or not child will be apathetic in kosciorkor and alert in marasmus avoid saying built and nourishment as it will be dealt in detail in anthropometry now coming to temperature oral temperature is avoided in young children instead rectal axilla temperature is preferred in protein energy malnutrition rectal temperature is taken hypothermia is when rectal temperature is less than 35.5 degrees celsius and axillary temperature is less than 35 degrees celsius Severe hypothermia is when rectal temperature is less than 32 degrees Celsius. 3 minutes is the ideal time for which thermometer should be placed in space for recording temperature. Now coming to pulse. Pulse varies as per age such as in neonate it is 110 to 150 beats per minute. From 1 month to 1 year it is 120 beats per minute. From 1 year to 6 years it is 100 to 120 beats per minute. from 6 years to 12 years it is 85 to 95 beats per minute and more than 12 years it is same as that of adults now going to respiratory rate it also varies for neonate it is 40 to 50 breaths per minute for 1 month to 1 year it is 30 to 40 breaths per minute from 4 to 6 years it is around 25 breaths per minute and for more than 12 years it is 16 to 20 breaths per minute and for defining it as tachypnea for less than 2 months it should be more than 60 breaths per minute from 2 months to 1 year it should be more than 50 breaths per minute and from 1 year to 5 years it should be more than 40 breaths per minute now going to blood pressure blood pressure of neonate is about 70 by 45 mm of mercury then we have to add 3 by 2 mm of mercury till 12 years of age at 12 years it achieves adult level Cup size is four to six centimeters in infant and seven to nine centimeters in children. Now continuing with general examination, it includes pallor, icterus, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, and edema. Now coming to second point, that is anthropometry. We have to assess each parameter in percentile as compared to the normal expected values. Here, the first parameter is weight. Expected weight for less than one year is age plus 9 by 2 from 1 to 6 years it is 2 into age plus 8 for more than 6 years it is 7 into age minus 5 by 2 now coming to second parameter that is height or length at birth it is 50 cm at 1 year it is 75 cm at 2 years it is 86.5 cm from more than 2 years it increases 6 cm per year now coming to head circumference at birth it is 33 to 35 cm at 3 months it becomes 40 cm at 6 months it is 42 to 43 cm at 1 year it becomes 45 to 46 cm and at 5 years it becomes 50 cm and remains constant now going to chest circumference at birth head circumference is greater than chest circumference by 3 cm at 1 year head head circumference becomes equal to chest circumference from more than 1 year head circumference is less than chest circumference now coming to mid upper arm circumference measured at midpoint between acromion and olecranon process it is valid only in 1 to 5 years of age group and the normal is 16 to 17 cm it is malnutrition when the mid upper arm circumference is less than 13.5 cm It is moderate malnutrition when it is 11.5 to 13.5 cm and it is severe malnutrition when it is less than 11.5 cm now coming to upper segment to lower segment ratio at birth it is 1.7 as to 1 at 3 years it becomes 1.3 as to 1 at 9 to 10 years it becomes 1 as to 1 and for more than 10 years it becomes 0.9 as to 1 now coming to arm span it is distance between the tip of middle finger of both hands when outstretched perpendicular to the body it is more in marfan syndrome and klinefelter syndrome it is less in achondroplasia and cretinism 
Now going to Convertis index. It is mid upper arm circumference upon head circumference. Normal value is 0 0.32 to 0 0.33 and it is less than 0 0.25 when it is known then it is known as malnutrition. The last two are first is jelly phase ratio and BMI. Jelly phase ratio is head circumference by chest circumference. BMI is weight in kilogram upon height in meter square. Now coming to head to toe examination. First of all skull. We have to know the shape. Brachycephaly when reduced AP diameter. Dolichocephaly when increased AP diameter. Dysmorphic features in skull are seen in Down syndrome. There are total six fontanelles. One anterior, one posterior, two anterolateral and two posterolateral. Anterior fontanelle is diamond shape and posterior fontanelle is triangular in shape. Anterior fontanelle closes by 18 months and posterior fontanelle closes by 2 to 3 months. Open fontanelle or delayed union is seen in hydrocephalus, rickets and hypothyroidism. Bulging fontanelle is seen in raised ICT. Depressed fontanelle is seen in dehydration. So there are few unique skull signs like crackpot sign also known as Mikey 1 sign seen in hydrocephalus. Trans illumination test is positive in hydrocephalus. Craniotips is seen in infantile rickets and brute are heard in raised intracranial tension. Now coming to eye. Kaiser Fleischer ring are seen in Wilson's disease. Bitot spot are seen in vitamin A deficiency. Congenital cataract can be seen. Retinoblastoma can be seen. For ears, we have to know whether they are normal or low set ears. We have to rule out any ear deformities such as microtia or periauricular sinus. Coming to nose, we have to rule out any deformity. For mouth, we have to look for vitamin deficiency, ulcers, cleft lip and palate, coplic spots which are specific to measles. We have to look for dentition. We have to look for tongue whether it is bald tongue as seen in vitamin B deficiency, coated, sin, uh, coated tongue as seen in enteric fever, chronic illness, etc. We have to look for high arched palate. We have to examine the throat for pharyngitis and tonsillitis. Now coming to neck. We have to see for the swelling as seen in diphtheria and mumps. We have to look for webbed neck as seen in Turner's syndrome. We have to know, check for the lymph node if there is any enlargement. We have to look for thyroid if there is any enlargement. Now coming to skin. We have to look for BCG mark turgor of the skin, color of the skin, rash as seen in exanthematous illness. Turgor determines dehydration status and color we can rule out hyperpigmentation or hypopigmentation if present any. Now going to nails, we have to look for platonychia, koilonychia as seen in iron deficiency. We have to look out, we look for brittle nails as seen in malnutrition. For hair, the hair signs are positive in protein energy, malnutrition and dermatitis. The last few points are bones, joints, spine. We have to inspect these things in kyphosis, scoliosis, etc. Then coming to genitalia, we have to inspect for uh, ambiguous genitalia or congenital, if congenital anomalies are present. Now developmental examination which is the last point. It is done only if the patient is suspected to have delayed milestone. It consists of primitive reflexes, muscle tone and milestone examination. So this concludes with clinical examination in pediatrics. I hope you liked the video. Please do like, share and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will never miss an update. Thank you.